Welcome everyone. Good evening. I'm Kathy Hume, president of the Graduate School Alumni Society. On behalf of the Penn State Alumni Association and the 755,000 alumni around the world, I am honored to welcome you to the 2024 Graduate School Alumni Society Recognition Dinner. We also have with us this evening the some of the recipients from earlier today who were recognized for the 10th, 25th, and 50th anniversary of their doctoral uh, degrees from Penn State. So welcome, everyone. Thank you. When I think about my time here um, as an alumni volunteer, I think about it as a series of we are moments, right? You know what those we are moments are. They are the, the times that tell us that we are so proud to be part of the Penn State family. Tonight is one of those we are moments as we recognize the excellence of graduate students and the achievements of our alumni. I am so happy that you are all here to join in this very special evening. In 1998, the Penn State Alumni Association gifted a $1 million um, endowment for um, the association's dissertation awards. These awards recognize the outstanding doctoral candidates and their dissertation research. The Alumni Association's mission supports the university's mission of teaching, research, and service. We see this mission come to life tonight as we, these graduate students take the stage and share their research with us. Also tonight, Dean Esters will be presenting the Graduate Alumni Society Awards. Congratulations to each of the recipients of tonight's honors. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. LaVon Esters, Vice Provost of Graduate Education and Dean of the Graduate School. Thank you, Kathy. Good evening. I'm delighted to be with you to present our 2024 awards. We will be presenting tonight's awards in two sessions. First, we will recognize our four outstanding alumni honorees. I invite you to enjoy your salads while I make my remarks. Then we will take a short break to enjoy our entrees, and then we will present the Alumni Association Dissertation Awards. I would now like to offer a warm welcome to Dr. Andrew Reed, Interim Senior Vice President for Research and Evan Pugh, University Professor of Biology and Entomology. <laughs> when we think about research, to me, that goes hand in hand with graduate education. There is a reciprocal relationship, and I have been sharing this perspective widely with the Penn State community. As you know from your own experience, graduate students engage in innovative projects, collaborate with faculty, play a vital role in groundbreaking research, and educate and mentor undergraduate students. Graduate education benefits Penn State's research and scholarship endeavors tremendously. And we are pleased that Dr. Reed, a leader of our research enterprise, will be helping me present the awards this evening. Also joining us tonight is one of my esteemed Dean colleagues, Dr. Tracy Lankilde, the Laverne W. William Dean of the Eberly College of Science. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Earlier today, we celebrated Penn State doctoral alumni who are celebrating their 10th, 25th, and 50th anniversary of earning their doctoral degrees from Penn State. Several honorees are here this evening. Please join me in giving these alumni honorees a warm round of applause. In addition, I would like to thank the members of the Graduate School Alumni Society Awards Committee for reviewing this year's nominations. The nominations were extremely competitive, and I appreciate your work in helping select the honorees. And now, to begin the presentation of the awards, I invite Dr. Reed to join me on stage. He will present the awards as I introduce each person. Our honorees have been invited to make brief remarks upon receiving their award. This year, 
we have two recipients of the Graduate School Society Early Career Award. This award recognizes alumni who have demonstrated exceptional success in their chosen field within the first 10 years after obtaining their graduate degree. Our first recipient is Dr. Julie A. Cerrito. Julie, please join me for your award presentation. Since earning her doctoral degree in counselor education and supervision, Dr. Julie Cerrito has been working as a full-time counselor educator, inspiring and guiding the next generation of school counselors. Since 2020, she has worked at Commonwealth University Bloomsburg as a faculty member and program coordinator for the master's program in school counseling. She previously spent seven years at the University of Scranton as associate professor and director of the School of Counseling graduate program. Julie's research focuses on access, equity, and advocacy in addressing the college and career readiness needs of underserved pre-K through grade 12 youth. She's been a part of former First Lady Michelle Obama's National Reach Higher Initiative since its inception in 2014 by participating in the annual White House convening as a representative for counselor educators and school counselors from Pennsylvania. She also served as co-chair for professional school counselors on the Pennsylvania College and Career Readiness Consortium. Julie has been recognized with numerous honors. In 2017, she was named Counselor Educator of the Year by the Pennsylvania School Counselors Association. That same year, she received the Edwin L. Hurd Fellowship for Excellence in Counseling Leadership and Scholarship from Chi Sigma Iota, the Counseling Academic and Professional Honor Society. In 2018, she received the Partner in Education Award from the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling, recognizing her outstanding contributions to post-secondary education initiatives. In 2020, she received the Faculty Senate Excellence in Graduate Teaching Award from the University of Scranton. Most recently, she was honored with the Bloomsburg University Provost Award for Research and Scholarly Activity. In addition to her doctoral degree at Penn State, Julie earned a bachelor's degree from Bloomsburg University, a master's degree from the University of Scranton, she is credentialed as a National Certified Counselor, National Certified School Counselor, and Approved Clinical Supervisor. <clears throat> Julie, it is my honor to present to you the Early Career Award. We will certainly be watching you as you continue your upward career trajectory. Let's go over here and get your award. Thank you. I am incredibly honored and humbled to receive this recognition. Thank you for acknowledging my efforts to support school counselor trainees in the important work that they do to assist underserved students in their college and career access and their transitions. As a first generation college student myself from a coal mining community in Northeastern Pennsylvania, this award reflects the espoused values of hard work, sacrifice and perseverance that I learned from my very first teachers, my parents. As much as my parents' values are present in all that I do both personally and professionally, I want to take a moment to talk about my second teachers, which include my professors here at Penn State. During my graduate studies, I was mentored by several internationally recognized experts in the fields of school and career counseling. I have been fortunate to take what I have learned from my doctoral education at Penn State and impart that wisdom to teach the next generation of school counselors. In my work as a counselor educator, I recognize that there is a well-established connection between personal development and career development. As one of my former professors at Penn State so eloquently stated, there is nothing more personal than a career choice. Often, when we first meet someone, we ask the question, what do you do for a living? And from that single response, we can infer much about who someone is personally. Therefore, our career choices 
are truly extensions of who we are. But we must keep in mind that as we are busy earning a living, we are also busy living a life. My life at Penn State was more than just late nights studying, writing papers, and conducting research. It was filled with many other personal achievements. It included the first date with my husband at Legends Pub, <laughs> our wedding at the Arboretum, our reception at the Nittany Lion Inn, and our PhD puppy, Shiloh, named after Shiloh Road, where we first lived together. I am incredibly grateful, not just for the education that I received from Penn State to help me prepare for a career, but also the education I received to help me prepare for life. I will forever have a lifelong connection to the Penn State community. I would like to thank the, thank the Graduate School Alumni Society for this once in a lifetime honor and the faculty at Penn State who supported my successes. I would also like to thank my family for their unwavering support, including my parents, husband, sisters, and nieces and nephews who will perhaps become future Penn Staters. <laughs> in summary, the impact that Penn State has had on my career and life is far reaching. It is my hope that the investment that Penn State has made in me will have widespread impacts for multiple generations well into the future. Thank you once again. Thank you again. Thank you and congratulations again. So our second recipient of the 2024 Early Career Award is Dr. Melanie R. McReynolds. Please join me for the presentation of your award. <laughs> Dr. Melanie McReynolds earned a PhD in biochemistry, microbiology, and molecular biology from Penn State a Howard Hughes Medical Institute <clears throat> Hannah H. Gray Fellow, and Assistant Professor <clears throat> of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at Penn State. She also holds the Dorothy Four Huck and J. Lloyd Huck Early Career Chair in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology in the Everly College of Science. Melanie is a biochemist specializing in understanding the connection between metabolic stress and aging. She has more than a decade of research, mentoring, and teaching experience that she is sharing with the Penn State graduate students and fellow faculty members. She is on the trajectory to establish her independent research group where her lab will shed light on metabolic aging and disease. She's been recognized with many prestigious awards, including the inaugural Intersection Science Fellow, the University of Utah Rising Star Award in Metabolism, the Burroughs Welcome Fund Postdoctoral Diversity Enrichment Program and Faculty Transition Fellowship, and the Penn State Student Way Paver Award from the Council of Multicultural Leaders. During her postdoctoral tenure at Princeton University, Melanie was recognized as a rising star on the cell press list of top 100 inspiring black scientists in America. She also holds a bachelor's degree and master's degree in chemistry and physics from Alcorn State University. Melanie, on behalf of everyone at Penn State, congratulations on your inspiring early career accomplishments we are excited to watch your continued career success. So I invite you to say a few words, Melanie. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. Happy Saturday. <laughs> I hope you all are doing well. Um, Thank you so much to everyone that played a part in this for this opportunity. I think when I think of this season, all I can say is that I am full. I am truly full with everything that's happening. Um, and I think of that about this, that it's really just only the beginning. So when I first came to Penn State over a decade ago, I was that young lady from rural Mississippi that was completely outside of the box, unorthodox. I used to color my hair different colors. I had all type of facial piercings, but Penn State did not care. You all allowed me to authentically be me and to be the best version of me. So I think about my mentors, Wendy Hannah Rose, Dr. Stephanie Preston, and how you both molded me into becoming a scientist and a leader. And we can think of a wise quote analogy that we all know, 
you have to crawl before you walk. You have to walk before you run. You have to run before you fly. And with the mentorship, um, the exposure, and that guidance that I received at all, I mean, not at Alcorn, but here at Penn State and Alcorn, I was able to fully run when I got to Princeton. I was able to go to Princeton and be the best scientist because of that foundation from Wendy. I was able to run the bureaucracy of my postdoc advisor, Josh Rabinowitz, all of his bureaucracy, all of his issues, I was able to handle it all because of um, Stephanie Preston, and he's like a world leader in metabolism, and, and just really that foundation that I received. And it was a really amazing opportunity to be able to come back here and start my career um, because I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for what I received. And to have the privilege to pay it forward and get, give it to the next generation has been so amazing. So when I think about this season, not only am I full, but this is truly the definition of what it means to be in position, to be at the right place and at the right time. And being back now, I'm, I can see the impact and what can happen over the next decade. I right now have over 20 undergrads in my lab, and that is due to like, thank you, Tiffany, for exposing me um, to the student engagement and how to really get involved with undergraduate research. And I can't change the world, but my students can, and we can all together create ripples into the atmosphere. And even now, I'm able to work beside Camelia Cantor and really learn how to be a strategic leader and how to really make moves that could change the world. And I am so thankful that you all came together and recommended me for this honor, because if it wasn't for you all, I wouldn't be here today. Um, so thank you, Penn State. This is just the beginning. We are just starting. And to receive this award is really the definition of we are. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, congratulations, Melanie. It is now my honor to introduce the recipient of the Graduate School Alumni Society Humanitarian Service Award. This award is presented to a person who has made a positive societal impact on humankind's welfare beyond their professional responsibilities. Their service may impact the local, state, national, or global level. This year, we are honoring Dr. Scott Michael Robertson. Scott, please join me for the presentation of your award. <clears throat> Dr. Scott Michael Robertson is a policy strategist, social scientist, accessible technology expert, and a leader in neurodiversity and inclusion. He currently serves as a senior policy advisor with the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy, where he works to foster neurodiversity in the workplace and advance national autism policy. Scott represents the office at the Federal Interagency Work Group on Autism and serves as a key subject matter expert for the office's project on research support services for employment of young adults on the autism spectrum. He directs the Partnership on Inclusive Apprenticeship to improve access to career paths in high growth, high demand fields. Scott has been an advisor on core equity and access issues for emerging work technology, technology excuse me, such as artificial intelligence and automated vehicles. Previously, Scott worked on Capitol Hill and served as a Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Fellow in the U.S. Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. He drafted provisions for legislation to increase access to higher education and community living and he provided expertise to U.S. Senator Tom Harkin on national disability policy issues. He also served as the founding vice president of the Autistic Self Advocacy Network, a national nonprofit organization. Scott earned a doctoral degree in information sciences and technology from Penn State. He also holds a master's degree in human computer interaction from the School of Computer Science from Carnegie Mellon University. Scott has been recognized for his efforts to increase access and opportunity for youth and adults with disabilities. In 2020, he was inducted into the National Disability Mentoring Coalition Hall of Fame. In 2021, the Viscardi Center honored him with the Henry Viscardi Achievement Award for global leaders who drive efforts to improve access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Penn State's College of Information Science and Technology recognized Scott's professional achievements with its Outstanding Alumni Award 
the highest honor the college bestows on graduates. Scott, for your tireless, ad tireless advocacy to improve equity, access, and inclusion for people with disabilities and for advancing the national autism policy, we are honored to present you with the Graduate School Alumni Society Humanitarian Service Award. Congratulations. Scott, I invite you to say a few words. Yeah, great. Thank you. This is honestly harder than the work sometimes, is where to position myself, believe it or not. With my autism, et cetera, it's just really complex. Um, so let me, I've got it on my iPad here. I would like to thank the Penn State Graduate School Alumni Society and staff of the Graduate School for this wonderful honor. I would also like to thank the College of Information Sciences and Technology, IST, my nominators, Dr. Michael Berube and Katie Smeltz, um, Michael is here, as well as my parents, Susan and Tim Robertson, who are watching via the live stream. They have provided enduring support and guidance that paved the way for all of my life pursuits. I greatly appreciate that this prestigious humanitarian award recognizes my leadership efforts and impact on improving access to gainful employment, inclusive career paths, and community living for diverse Americans with significant disabilities. When speaking, I typically support accessibility for fellow people with disabilities by sharing a visual description of myself as an autistic white man with blue eyes, brown hair, and glasses. And I'm wearing a red shirt you know, and dark jacket right now as well. And my lived experience as an autistic person with other significant disabilities and the major barriers and adversity I faced helped shape my advocacy and career path. And many times on my life journey, I've experienced substantial challenges such as systemic accessibility barriers and bullying, especially when I was younger, which hampered my personal security and depleted my self-confidence. Yet I have nonetheless strived to attain meaningful achievements and pay it forward for supports like I received here at Penn State to attain great success in life. And so my calling, is, my calling in life is focused on empowering fellow marginalized people with disabilities, including neurodivergent people like autistic folks like myself, to foster a high quality of life. The stories from my colleagues with significant disabilities, including autistic people and allies, help energize that drive and keep my passion for my work in government and elsewhere flowing. Thank you, Penn State, for my enriching doctoral education and its role in kindling my talents and skills to ensure a fruitful career and substantial impact. We are. Again, congratulations, Scott. We will now honor Dr. Vivian Valenti with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Vivian, would you please join us? Dr. Vivian Valenti grew up in the Philippines where she and her family slept on mats on the floor of a one-room house on suits, still, excuse me. From an early age, she was fascinated by the medicinal qualities of plants. She graduated as high school class valedictorian and earned a scholarship to attend Mapua Institute of Technology, now Mapua University, a top technology school known as the MIT of the Philippines, where she, has majored, where she majored in chemistry. After graduation, Vivian worked at the International Rice Research Institute investigating the chemical properties of rice. A Ford Foundation grant allowed her to pursue graduate studies in chemistry at Penn State, where she earned a doctoral degree in organic chemistry, specializing in biochemical processes with Professor Gordon Hamilton. Vivian sampled academic life while teaching organic and biochemistry at Skidmore College and working in government labs at the New York State Department of Health before finding her passion working in industry, creating specialty chemical products that solve problems in fields such as agriculture, textiles, microelectronics, graphic arts, and finally cosmetics. Vivian spent an entire year on a part-time basis developing a nail top coat for the professional nail industry. After 300 trial formulations, 
She produced a sample that dried traditional nail polishes within just six minutes using UV light. This was the world's first UV top coat. In 1990, she left the corporate world to manufacture the top coat, innovate new products under private labels for emerging brands. Vivian incorporated her company, VP Cosmetics, in 1993. In 1997, after the FDA released a statement highlighting the dangers of UVA light used in tanning beds, Vivian spent the next 10 years developing Dazzle Dry, a four-step nail polish system that dries in five minutes without UV light exposure and reactive chemicals, yet wears for more than seven days and removes like a traditional polish. <laughs> yeah. Got yeah. It, it, that's, that's, we can do that. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, Dazzle Dry now generates more than 20 million in annual sales and is growing rapidly. Vivian holds several patents involving detergents, electronics, ceramics, and cosmetics. Last year, Vivian received the Outstanding Mupuan Award from Mupu uh, University. She has been featured on NBC's Today Show, ABC's Good Morning America, National Magazine articles and blog posts, and our products have won industry awards. The People, Growth, Products, and Social Responsibility Initiatives of VP Cosmetics have been recognized by the state of Arizona and other local government and professional association groups. Vivian's company donates to nonprofits supporting women's education and in partnership with WeForce, plants one tree for every order placed on its website. To date, VP Cosmetics has planted more than 500,000 trees in India and Africa. <laughs> Vivian, in recognition of your outstanding professional accomplishments and service, I am honored to present you with the Graduate School Lifetime Achievement Award. Vivian, I invite you to say a few words. Thank you, Dean Ethers. The Penn State Graduate School Alumni Society, Dean Lang Langkilde, and the Eberly Colleagues of Science, Professors Benkovic and Hamilton, who are not able to join us tonight, uh, Bevilacqua, Thomas and the Penn State Chemistry Department for recognizing my lifetime achievements. Thank you also to the three Jennifers, uh, Thais, uh, Miska, and Lawrence, who for making my visit back to Penn State a pleasant and memorable experience. My life is an adventure where one experience or interaction led to another and shaped the present. I consider these interrelationships as part of my education and wish to thank all who left an indelible mark on me by mentioning their names until I realized there were too many <laughs> to fit within the time constraints of this program. <laughs> but I would be remiss if I didn't thank my family who supported me as I navigated my career. My husband, Steve, our son, Jeff, our daughter, Elise, grandsons, Mateo, and grandson, Trey, and uh, brother and uh, my uh, son-in-law, Craig, the Oreo, are here to participate in the celebration. I came to Penn State in 1966, met Steve. As a fellow chemistry graduate student here at Penn State, we dated in 1969 and got married that year. Our son, Jeff, was born the following year. 
At night, Steve and I took turns caring for him in our studio apartment. And during the day in Professor Alcock's empty spare office at Chandley Laboratory <laughs> while we were finishing our thesis. This arrangement was possible because Jeff was the perfect baby. <laughs> he slept a lot. I would not be here accepting this award today without Steve's love and support over the past 54 years. He gave me the resolve to carry on when I was on the brink of giving up. To borrow the lyrics from one of Betty Midler's songs, if I were an eagle, Steve is the wind beneath my wings. To me, he is a co-recipient of this prestigious award. In closing, I want all to know that my Penn State experience contributed to the educational foundation critical to my success in life. Without further ado, thank you all. Again, congratulations. So uh, thank you and congratulations to all our alumni honorees. We are now going to take a short break to enjoy our entrees. I will return soon to present the Penn State Alumni Association Dissertation Awards. Thank you. Uh, we will now recognize the recipients of the 2024 Alumni Association Dissertation Awards. The Alumni Association Dissertation Award recognizes outstanding achievement in doctoral degree research, scholarship, and professional accomplishment. These awards provide support for doctoral students who have passed their comprehensive examinations and received approval of their dissertation topics. A minimum of two awards of $5,000 each are made in the following broad disciplinary categories. Arts and Humanities, Social and Behavioral Sciences, Physical and Computational Sciences, Life and Health Sciences, and Engineering. 13 Alumni Association Dissertation Awards will be awarded this year. 11 scholars are here this evening to be honored. I invite Dr. Reed, who's already up here, to join me at, again at the podium. <laughs> he stays prepared. <laughs> he will present the awards as I introduce each recipient. Instead of me reading a summary of the student's dissertation, uh, the students will briefly tell us about the impact of their research so you can hear about the exciting work in their own voices. As I call your name, please join us at the podium, and after you receive your award, we will take a photo with Dr. Reed. You will then make your remarks of, make your remarks of two minutes. Our first recipient is Dima Abu Arida on architecture. I'm very honored to be, uh, to be here today. Uh, I briefly talk about my research. So my research explores the design of refugee camps through social, familial, historical, and spatial lenses. I seek to understand how refugees rearrange their public and private spaces af after settling into a camp. Using a Syrian refugee camp in Jordan as a case study, I examine how refugee, uh, refugees shape a new way of life and uh, per Portedly or temporary situations, and how this observation informs the production of refugee housing and settlements that respect refugees' communal uh, rituals and values. My research contributes to a better understanding of refugees' settlements and shelter de design, with, a, with a profound implications for the humanitarian community and policymakers. 
It promotes the well-being and resilience of displaced populations by acknowledging refugees' efforts to integrate their needs and preferences into shelter and settlement design. My research provides a comprehensive understanding of the conditions in protracted refugee camps and identifies the elements within the built environment that empower refugees to develop a, strong, a stronger sense of self-identity, self-efficacy, and self-reliance. It also empowers refugees to become co-creators of their social and, and spatial environments. Um, today, I would like to thank the Alumni Association and the Graduate School for this recognition of my, of my work. I hope that I can contribute meaningfully to the improvement of the quality of lives of refugees and displaced individuals around the world. Thank you for gen your generosity and belief in my endeavors. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next recipient is Katie. Bernard, Recreation, Park, and Tourism Management with a dual title in Transdisciplinary Research on Environment and Society. Katie is currently in Rwanda during her dissertation field work and is unable to be with us. Her advisor, Carter Hunt, will accept the award on her behalf. Good evening. I have a few comments that Katie passed along. Um, I'd like to first of all acknowledge that I'm the co-advisor of Katie Bernard. Her fellow co-advisor, Edwin Bernard, is seated at table 10 with me tonight. Um, and Katie sends along her apologies for not being here in person. Uh, but as she says, I would like to express my gratitude for the award for my dissertation fieldwork site here in Rwanda. First of all, thank you to the Penn State Alumni Association for recognizing the potential impact of my research. My research asks questions about individual decision-making and household resilience in communities bordering the protected mountain gorilla habitat in Volcanoes National Park, Rwanda. These communities face major economic and livelihood challenges and often must resort to taking resources from the forest to meet their basic needs. I hope that the results of my dissertation will help guide national park management and conservation organizations to design more community-centered programs in East Africa to strengthen livelihoods and resilience and improve community well-being and agency in and around tropical forest landscapes. This research would not be possible without my local institutional partner, the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International. Operating research stations in Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo since 1967, the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund is the world's leading, run, the leading gorilla research institution. It has supported and facilitated my research from the start. Next, I would like to acknowledge entities that have funded my dissertation research. First, I've received support from the National Science Foundation, both the Landscape U NRT Fellowship here at Penn State and a doctoral dissertation research grant in Decision, Risk, and Management Sciences. I am also supported by the NASA Pennsylvania Space Grant Consortium Graduate Research Fellowship. Finally, thank you to my co-advisors, Carter Hunt and Edwin Sabuhoro, and committee members Kate Zip and Erica Smithwick for the feedback, support, and encouragement. Thank you. Oh. Our next recipient is Mason Breitzig, epidemiology. epidemiology. Yeah, I immediately forgot all of it, so. <laughs> Good evening. Before I share a brief overview of my research with you, I would like to thank the Penn State Alumni Association for the dissertation award. I am deeply grateful for the support and encouragement to continue my work. My dissertation research focused on major depressive disorder, which remains poorly understood and a significant and growing societal challenge. Despite its rising prevalence in youth and substantial contribution to global disability, Effective treatment is elusive for many individuals. Those who seek and receive care often endure multiple inadequate treatment event attempts. The process of matching treatment and patient is a complex art that clinical guidelines attempt to objectify. However, the guidelines are aspirational and unrealistic, resulting in poor generalizability to real-world practice and insufficient uptake. 
To understand this disconnect and test the applicability of clinical guidelines, I developed an innovative algorithm called the GCA-8. The metric evaluates adherence to uh, real-world depression treatment to evidence-based guidelines using electronic medical record data. It also acknowledges clinicians' daily challenges in treating mood disorders. Our Penn State College of Medicine team published a study that showed better scores on this algorithm were associated with improved patient outcomes. Moreover, the metric highlighted treatment gaps and disparities that could be critical targets for researchers, clinicians, and guideline development. Our team is now collaborating with multiple institutions across the US to expand the algorithm, validate it in diverse clinical populations, and pave the way for large-scale health system deployment. Recent funding calls by federal agencies reinforce that this timely work has the potential to markedly impact the treatment of mood disorders and psychiatry more broadly. Thank you again very much. Our next recipient is Hao Young Chen, Bioengineering. Good evening, everyone. Uh, esteemed guests, faculty members, fellow researchers, and other award recipients, and all the wonderful Penn State alumni. Standing here tonight, I'm beyond honored to receive this prestigious dissertation award. A huge thank you to Penn State Alumni, alumni Association for making this uh, generous award possible and uh, the recognition of my research. I'm also incredibly thankful uh, to my advisor, Dr. Raj Kodapali. Um, he supported me and provided me a wonderful training environment to allow me dive into the field of neuroimaging. My research focused on using innovative imaging techniques to improve outcomes of the patients who are suffering from neurolog neurological disorders. In the United States, around 100 million people were affected by one or more of the 400 neurologic disorders. However, our limited understanding of how the brain functions restricts our capabilities for understanding, treating, and diagnosing them all. Therefore, towards this, I have had the privilege of pioneering two multimodal imaging systems to help us advance our knowledge of the blood flow in the brain. One is multimodal microscopy imaging based on innovative transparent ultrasound transducers, and another one is whole brain imaging using integrated ultrafast ultrasound and photoacoustic imaging systems. These innovations not only provide the blood flow information in the brain, but also molecular information. With all this uh, rich information, um, these multimodal imaging systems can greatly enhance and uh, improve the diagnosis accuracy and the prognosis of patients with brain diseases. I'm truly honored to receive this award, which is not just a recognition of my past achievement, but it's also a deep responsibility for me to continue pushing the boundaries for neuroimaging. In the future, I decide to continue my professional career in academia uh, as a postdoc, which I will further advance and clinical translate these devices uh, for human use. I hope that I can continue striving for excellence and using science to make positive differences for the health of the patients. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Our next recipient is Mayura Damadere, biomedical scientist with a dual title in clinical and translational sciences.
Hello, everyone. Good evening. So first of all, I would like to thank all of you and first of all, and the Penn State Alumni Association for recognizing my efforts and my research work. It was really a lot of work. So I am a, I'm a biomedical sciences student, as um, Steve just introduced, and I work on neuroblastoma, which is a childhood cancer. It's a pediatric cancer, and one of the leading causes of cancer-related deaths because it is extremely aggressive and highly metastatic. So my work focused on identifying such kind of novel targets that you can potentially develop into treatments for these kind of aggressive metastatic neuroblastomas. And my thesis work, since uh, from last four years, <laughs> I was able to identify this novel target called IGF2BP1, and um, I'm currently working on developing or potentially targeting it with the currently available treatments as well as by itself as a novel therapeutic strategy for these metastatic neuroblastomas. So uh, currently with these available treatments, more than half of these uh, kids that are diagnosed with neuroblastomas usually, uh, usually undergo relapse. And they, uh, they kind of are, it's very difficult to treat them. That's why it's very important or it's, it becomes essential to uh, identify these kind of novel targets. So I would like to thank, for, uh, so this award is basically uh, it goes to my advisor because he he could he guided me through all these four years. My parents and of course my husband who drove me today here, to uh, who drove me here today. So this all for believing me, believing in me, and thank you all for kind of uh, recognizing my efforts and believing in me, supporting me. So this is truly very inspirational, and it kind of inspires me more to work towards this, to work towards this field and do more in terms of cancer therapeutics. So thank you everyone once again. A picture over here. Our next recipient is Mi Young Huan Kim, Biomedical Engineering. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Myung-Hwan Kim, a PhD student majoring in biomedical engineering. Um, I am excited to receive this prestigious award, and I would like to express all my gratitude to Penn State and the Penn State Alumni Association. I would also like to thank my dissertation advisor, uh, Professor Ibrahim Ozubolat, and my um, dissertation committee members for their uh, invaluable um, guidance and for providing me the excellent research environment where I could do many meaningful research. My research, focus, my research focuses on developing artificial tissues and organs that can mimic the functionality and the physiological conditions of native human tissues and organs such as bone, um, pancreas and lungs by using noble bioprinting techniques. These native-like artificial tissues and organs can be used for um, the disease modeling to um, understand the disease mechanisms and for fi finding their potential um, the medications. In addition, this research includes new regeneration strategies for tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. I look forward to continuing this research, and once again, thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Our next recipient is Ming Chi Lao, Mass Communications.
Hello, everyone. Um, before I start to introduce my research, I want to say I'm extremely thrilled and grateful to be selected as the recipient of the Alumni Association Dissertation Award this year. And I would like to thank um, my um, nominator, as well as my advisor, Dr. Shamsunder, uh, my committee members, the graduate program, and of course, the Donna P. Belisario College of Communication for always supporting my research not only my dissertation, all of my research, and also helping me become a better scholar every day. So I study human-computer interaction, um, particularly the way in which we form trust uh, towards newer media, but more importantly, artificial intelligence applications. Um, so my research mainly try to answer just two big questions. First, why do we form trust towards technology? Why do we sometimes you know, mindlessly trust technology? And second, what can we do about it? Okay, so in my dissertation, I try to answer both of these questions by focusing on generative AI applications like ChatGPT. So have you heard about ChatGPT? Of course, we all have. Do you think that ChatGPT, everything generated by ChatGPT is credible? No, of course not, right? They can generate fake news. Um, but apparently, many lay users will br blindly trust the information generated by ChatGPT, right? So my dissertation tried to you know, investigate why this happens, and I try to investigate if you know the conversational aspect of it, because ChatGPT is really conversational, as if you are interacting with a real human beings, right? And then I'm trying to investigate if you know uh, some lay users might develop these naive beliefs about technology, like AI can be magical, and this can be problematic in a way. So uh, I try to understand if these are the reasons why we sometimes really blindly trust technology. And then I try to investigate if we can add a proper verification affordance or a verification mechanism to help lay users to better calibrate their trust. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, I'm deeply motivated to conduct research that can benefit the environment, individual users, and society at large, and I hope my research can provide implications for designing socially responsible technology that can facilitate more mindful use and facilitate appropriate trust instead of just blind trust and higher media, media literacy among lay users. So I would say this award is truly meaningful as it serves as a validation that my research is not only interesting to me and our little circle, but also to the external public. Uh, and it's truly a great encouragement for me to continue to pursue this line of research. Uh, and I would like to thank, uh, again, the generosity of the Penn State Alumni Association for this award. Thank you so much. Our next recipient is Meredith Paris Parisco from Horticulture. Hi everyone, my name is Meredith Persico and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Plant Science here at Penn State. And I study different ways that climate change and specifically global warming impacts grapevine physiology and wine grape production. I also, I heard some, mm. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, I also help investigate methods to prevent spring freeze damage, which is a recurring issue in um, horticultural crops and grapevines specifically. And I hope that my research can help um, Grape growers and perennial fruit crop growers grow grapes better, especially amidst climate change. So I'd like to thank the Alumni Association for recognizing me for my research. Also my advisor, Michaela Centenari, the Department of Plant Science and the College of Ag. And finally, my partner, Luke, for his love and support along the way. So thank you all. Our next recipient is Gavin Rakoff of Psychology. Uh, 
Uh, thank you to the Alumni Association for generously recognizing my work. Uh, I'm in psychology and my research examines methods of expanding access to mental health support, especially using widely available consumer technologies. Many psychological concerns do not receive adequate treatment and digital technology can be a scalable method of delivering social support and self-help information that could have a substantial public health impact. Audio-based digital media, such as podcasts and audiobooks, are quite popular um, and easy to use methods of consuming information, uh, but they've received very little attention as methods of delivering mental health support over the internet. My dissertation tests the effectiveness of an audio-based self-help intervention uh, for teaching evidence-based skills to manage depression. I hope the impact of this work can be the development of helpful forms of mental health support that are easy to access and use. I greatly appreciate the Alumni Association's recognition as I pursued this project. Major thanks are also due to my advisor, Dr. Michelle Newman, uh, who's a professor in clinical psychology. The study of online mental health interventions was completely new to me when I started at Penn State, but Dr. Newman graciously brought, brought me into the fold with many opportunities to work with her and her collaborators in this truly exciting area of research. Through my training with Dr. Newman and at Penn State, I've learned to think both critically and creatively uh, about how to conduct research with a real world impact. I'm so grateful uh, for the opportunities I've received at Penn State that have culminated in my dissertation work and helped build my career. Thank you so much. Our next recipient is Maria Rovito, American Studies. Uh, hi, sorry, I'm being distracted by cake, so. Um, <laughs> all right, um, so I'm Maria Rovito, American Studies. Um, my dissertation examined the history of endometriosis. So I'm assuming some of the men in this room don't know what that is, so let me explain it for you. It's a disease where uh, tissue similar to the uterine lining uh, grows all over your body. Um, it's been found in lungs, eyes, brains, etc. cetera. Um, it's, it impacts roughly 11 to 15% of people with the uterus, about 220 million worldwide. However, there's only about 200 doctors who are able to treat it. So uh, I'm in the humanities, medical humanities, disability studies. So I wanted to um, reveal its stigmatization and misrepresentation as primarily an infertility issue, um, particularly since the early 20th century. So I looked at medical misconceptions, which are rooted in gender bias and medical misogyny. Um, and that prioritize reproductive roles over uh, women's well-being. So I used auto theory and feminist disability studies, and um, I went to archives all over the Northeast um, from, you know, Harvard, uh, J Johns Hopkins, the Mutter Museum, et cetera. So I delved into um, why endometriosis is so overlooked in gynecology and its portrayals in media and literature. So these historical views have perpetuated mistreatment in healthcare, especially towards women of color and women from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. So I ask how scholars within the medical field can re-examine endometriosis as a chronic pain disorder rather than a form of infertility. Um, I use my historical trace sources to trace how this illness was constructed as a career woman's disease by the medical profession in the 1940s and 50s. So sorry, I'm a PhD, so I guess I am a career woman with endo, right? Okay, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, so this framing demonized women's reproductive choices and stethosage uh, for mistreatment and um, you know forcing women to properly inhabit gender roles rather than uh, situating their pain, experience, and agency. So ultimately, my work advocates for a shift toward recognizing endometriosis as a chronic pain decision condition um, 
you know, focusing on patient-centered approaches to healing and experience. So I have so many people to thank. Honestly, my committee, uh, Dr. John Hatta and my advisor, uh, Mary Zaborski's, Michael Barabay, uh, Ellen Stockstill, Mariah Kuffner, uh, the Alumni Association, and the Graduate School here at Penn State. Um, I received funding to travel to archives from the Northeast Modern Language Association. I want to thank them. Uh, my mom and dad, uh, you know, uh, my brother, right? I'm sure he helped um, <laughs> some, somehow doing something. Um, so yeah, uh, ultimately I just want to show um, girls with endo and my disabled female students that um, you can achieve all your dreams. So thank you. Final recipient is Devia Singh, physics. Um, since I'm the last one, I would like to start by thanking all of you for being here to celebrate all the awardees tonight. I am truly honored to be in the company of such accomplished and talented Penn Staters. Um, I'd like to thank the Penn State Alumni Association and the Graduate School for this recognition. This has been possible due to the guidance and support I've received over the last six years from my advisors, Professor Hanna and Professor Satya Prakash, who are here with, with us today. Also, I was blessed with a cohort who have been great colleagues and some of my closest friends throughout these years, one of whom who was nice enough, was kind enough to drive me here tonight and be here with us. Um, in 2015, uh, we, detected, we detected the first gravitational waves from merging binary black holes, which was a century after Einstein first predicted their existence. In my graduate research, I explore how gravitational wave observations offer a unique avenue for dark matter detection. Vera Rubin's groundbreaking work since the 1970s solidified the existence of dark matter, originally hypothesized by Fritz Wicke in 1933. Despite decades of research, the nature of dark matter remains elusive, leading to numerous theories attempting to explain its properties. Approximately 85% of the matter in the universe um, is believed to be dark matter. It does not interact with light, unlike stars, planets, and other visible entities. We only know of its existence through its gravitational interaction with stars and galaxies, making gravity a unique and almost singular way to detect it and study it. I actively conduct and develop searches to identify gravitational wave sing uh, signals in data collected by gravitational wave detectors on the ground, like LIGO, Virgo, and CAGRA that are across the world. Um, and I specifically look for gravitational wave signals that, are, that could originate from dark matter compact objects. Simultaneously, I have worked on constraining fundamental properties of dark matter, such as its mass, abundance, and how it interacts with visible matter based on these gravitational wave detections. The nature of dark matter stands as one of the most pressing questions in fundamental physics today, engaging researchers across physics from particle physics to astrophysics. Unraveling its mysteries demands innovative approaches, including the construction of highly sensitive instruments to test various models, work on which is underway to build the next generation of even of gravitational wave detectors as well as particle uh, detectors to detect um, dark matter. <laughs> the algorithms and technologies developed in this pursuit also hold broader applications in commercial and private industries. I've name dropped a lot. I will name drop another physicist, Isaac Newton, and I will modify his quote slightly to say, I have dared to see further because I stand on the shoulders of giants. I hope that my dissertation work here will serve as an inspiration for the next generation of inquisitive and daring scientists, particularly engaging students from underrepresented minorities to venture into this exciting field of research. Thank you.
I was just checking my notes because I have one award left, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't make a mistake, but I don't see that person listed, so thank you. All right, so <clears throat> please join me in a final round of applause for these outstanding Penn State scholars. Really, hearing from our students makes me feel incredibly optimistic about our future. Um, and I have a few more words to say related to that in a little bit. But what I want to do now is I would like to also thank uh, you, Dr. Reed, for your partnership in presenting these evening's awards. So let's give Dr. Reed a hand. And I, I would also like to invite Dr. Reed up to say a few words. Dr. Reed. Thanks very much. It is a bit intimidating when you share a stage with people that are doing such great work and have done such great work, uh, makes sitting in all those committee meetings that we do seem totally worthwhile. I see a dean nodding her head aggressively. Uh, the trick to graduate school, according to a newly retired professor of plant biology, Andy Stevenson, he's very noted, very successful career at Penn State. Uh, he said the trick for graduate school is to have ideas and pursue vigorously. Have ideas pursue vigorously. And that really is it. Neither of them is easy though. It's surprisingly hard to have good ideas and that actually takes years of training. But I want to briefly talk about the other part, the pursue vigorously part. This is also not easy. Pursuing vigorously takes discipline and sure it requires a lot of hours. You have to put in serious hours. But you just can't put in the hours, turn the handle and out pops the PhD. It's not the hours alone that do it. You have to put those hours in with serious discipline. And for myself and the students that I've advised, I've found the required discipline generates two mental battles, two separate different problems that you have to deal with during your time at graduate school. One is that you absolutely have to accept that an awful lot of your effort will be wasted. Much of your work will not appear in your thesis at all. Because if you're really creating something new, something genuinely different, a lot of time you'll pursue things that turn out to be dead ends. And you just have to suck it up. You wasted, wasted all that time. That can be very frustrating, and especially early on in graduate school, people can be quite shocked by it. But if you knew the most efficient pathway to genuinely creative new work or new knowledge, you'd just do it. If you knew it from the outset, of course you'd do it, but then it wouldn't be genuinely new you'd be following the path that somebody else has taken. So you just have to accept that waste is tough and you put up with it. The other mental battle that I've found comes from a key part of what all great institutions of higher education provide, and that is criticism. You have to learn to listen to criticism. It's everywhere. Your advisor provides it, hopefully gently and hopefully well organised, but your advisor does essentially pick apart your work. And then your colleagues in the lab group, they also hopefully gently and with a great deal of help, pull your ideas apart, your work and so forth. But then as you step out into the world and the exhibitions and conferences, and especially when you get to the peer review publications, and especially when you get to putting out your own grants, you get nothing but criticism. Criticism, criticism, criticism. And you think your work is brilliant and everybody else's job is to pull it apart. And that is very tough. And I still feel the pain of rejection. After 40 years, it still causes me to go to bed for two weeks when a great grant of mine doesn't get funded. It's very, very tough, and that is very tough on students. It is a weird business, this whole uh, graduate side of things. If you think about it, the affirmation actually comes from a lack of criticism. So at some point the criticism stops and you know you've done a good job, you get the grant, the paper gets accepted, and occasionally somebody tells you you did a great job, and I think that's one of the best things about what's going on here. We are talking to people about the great job they've done. But in general, it's, a, it's this lack of criticism that tells you you've done well, and that is a strange uh, way to live if you think about it. But some good does come from that and I want to finish just on on the good that comes from that criticism. The first is that you learn a lot of humility. That you can get things wrong, that there's a whole heap of stuff that you don't know and the longer I'm in this business the more ignorant I feel and the more things I know I don't know. And I think that's really good, the humility is really good. Um, the second is that criticism is a strong error correction system so it keeps us pushing back the frontiers because the ideas are being examined so hard, they're being pushed so hard, that we make forward progress and they create the sort of wealth and the sort of things we all have around us because of that criticism process. So it is a very important part of the modern error correction process that goes into um, learning 
and pushing forward the frontiers. And then I think perhaps most important with the criticism comes the fact that we have to learn as individuals to uh, disagree agreeably. You can only do things in universities, you can only make fu uh, function, get things done with this criticism around if the criticism is around the ideas and we have ground rules for how we do the disagreements. And the disagreements can be actually very agreeable after a while. They can be a lot of fun so long as we have the right kind of ground rules. And when we do our scholarship well, we learn to disagree agreeably. And we teach other people how to disagree agreeably. And when we don't do that, when we get angry, we start attacking things other than the ideas themselves, things go off the rails and we don't make progress. So I think when we're starting to generate heat and not light, that's because we've broken these ground rules on how to disagree agreeably. And I have to say, at this point in the time for the history of Penn State in the US and the global situation, what could be more important than learning to disagree agreeably? So thanks you to all the young people in the room for your scholarship and hard work, and for the very accomplished senior people in the room who know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you very much for uh, all of your work and support for Penn State. And I wish the winners and everybody else who's in graduate school right now uh, great success as they go out and change the world. Thanks very much. So before you leave, Dr. Reed, uh, uh, we have a the graduate school wants to give you a token of our appreciation, so here you go. Okay, he didn't know that was coming. So there are others who must be recognized for the success of our graduate students. First, our faculty. In graduate education, we use several terms for the role faculty serve. But to me, the most important is mentor. Many graduate students come to Penn State because of the reputation of our faculty and their, stat and their stature as premier researchers in their respective fields. Faculty are invested in the success of students beyond their research. They serve as inspiring mentors, role models, and often develop lifelong friendships, relationships. Please join me in recognizing and thanking all Penn State faculty members here tonight. <laughs> Finally, I would, like, well, I, would like, I would also like to acknowledge the rest of the village that supports our graduate programs and students, including college, department, and program administrators and staff who provide guidance, support, and community for students who may be far from home and our dedicated alumni volunteers who generously give their time, expertise, and treasure to support the holistic professional development of graduate students. You all, each and every one of you, play a vital role during a graduate student's education. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> to our alumni honorees and alumni association dissertation award recipients, while you are all at varying stages of your careers, each one of you is an inspiration to the entire Penn State community. You embody the ideals that make Penn State one of the world's premier research universities. I wish you much continued success. So you all may have noticed that I have been reading uh, from a script that was prepared by my staff tonight and so I have one more thing I want to say at the end that's actually printed in the script, but I'm going to go off script for a second and say a few things that are important to me. Uh, one is, so I started this job May 1st, 2023, and um, you all know I've shared in different spaces. I'm a proud Penn State graduate, having earned my PhD here in, 20, in 2003. And this is my first exhibition weekend. So yesterday we had our kickoff with our exhibition with posters being presented. I had a chance with the exception of students who were conversating with someone. I went up and down every single aisle and, and shook or talked to every student that was there. I then proceeded across the hall and observed the visual arts displays from students. Later yesterday evening, I went and saw the musical arts performances last night. Then this morning, had a chance to see the three, uh, inaugural 3MT uh, competition. And then here tonight, being able to sit here or stand here, if you will, 
and listen to those, those remarks that were made by our award recipients. And I can say unequivocally, I am honored to be in this position. We have some outstanding students. Society is in good hands, folks, with the students that we have here. So let's give them a hand. And they weren't aware that I was going to do this, but I would like uh, where you're sitting, I would like the staff, so Lisa and Heidi and Lim, all the grad, grad school staff that has helped put this together, stand up where you are. Please stand up right now. Stand up, stand up, stand up, wherever you are. Jennifer, yes. We give them a hand. You know, for students, you may think that, you know, I have it easy. I have it easy because they make me look good. They are phenomenal to work with. I have some outstanding staff, 70 plus folks in the grad school. They are dedicated to grad education. They come to work every day, committed to doing the work. Um, they, they make my job easy. And, and I cannot, and I'm so blessed to be able to work with folks like those that, who just stood up, among others. Um, so I want to make sure I, say, I shared that. But again, uh, this, comes to, this brings us to the end of our evening. Please enjoy your coffee, your cake. Uh, my final duty tonight is to invite one person, so on your way out, at each table to take home the beautiful flower centerpiece to enjoy. Don't fight. <laughs> Disagree and agree. What did you say? What was that? <laughs> right, right. So, or maybe rock, paper, scissors. Figure it out, right? Which how you want to do it. Uh, but thank you all for joining us. Uh, really, have a good night. Travel safe home and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you.